Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at four more graphs, and that's tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant graphs. And these graphs are going to be a little different because these graphs are going to have asymptotes. The reason they're going to have asymptotes is because tangent can be written as sine of x over cosine x. And so anywhere cosine x equals 0, for example, that happens at pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. It also happens at 3 pi over 2, which is 270 degrees. It happens at 5 pi over 2. It happens at negative pi over 2. There's a lot of places where cosine is 0. Anytime cosine touches the x-axis, tangent is going to be undefined. That means we're going to have a vertical asymptote there. Cotangent is going to have the same problem. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Now, cotangent is going to have asymptotes anytime we get 0 for sine. And that happens at 0, at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, at negative pi, in both directions. And so anytime that happens, we're going to have an asymptote for cotangent. Same thing is going to be true for cosecant and secant. So let's do the secant first. Secant is 1 divided by cosine. Let me put some x's on these, by the way. You always have to have an argument after this. Not argument like argue with a friend, but that means an angle. So again, anywhere you have cosine is 0, you're going to have asymptotes, which means secant has asymptotes in the same place that tangent does. And then also cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And that's going to have anywhere sine is 0, which same thing as cotangent, you're going to have asymptotes. So anyway, that's a lot of stuff. Let's go take a look at them. So let's graph y equals tangent x. First of all, we're going to put asymptotes everywhere cosine is 0. That's negative 90, that's negative 270, that's positive 90, that's positive 270. We are going to put asymptotes there. Now this is not part of the graph, but it is a part that, that the uh, graph cannot touch. In other words, asymptotes should not show up, but it is good guiding behavior. Okay, so there are our asymptotes for tangent. Oh, I missed that one a little bit, but you get the picture. So we put asymptotes there. And when a graph approaches an asymptote, it can only do one of two things. It can either approach positive infinity or negative infinity. In other words, your graph needs to go straight up or straight down. So I'm going to just show you what this looks like. Here is a, this is going to be three cycles of tangent. Do, 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 do. Here is one graph of tangent. Straight up towards that asymptote, straight down. Notice this period here. This period here is only 180 degrees. That's one full graph of tangent. I can show you a second cycle if you want. There's two graphs of tangent. Hey, let's do a third one. I have room for three. There, there's three graphs of tangent. That's what tangent looks like. Its period, tangent's period, is only 180 degrees. And by the way, in radians, that is equal to pi. So that's a graph of tangent. Let's take a look at a shift in tangent. Let's do a graph of y equals tangent of, let's not shift it, let's change the period. What about tangent of 2x? Now we have learned that when we put a number in front of x and after the trig function that this affects the period. And you had a formula for sine and cosine that the period was 2 pi divided by b or 360 divided by b. But here, since it's tangent, we're going to do the period is pi divided by b or 180, I almost said 360, 180 divided by b. So for this graph, our, our period is going to be, since I've got degrees on my x-axis here, our period is going to be 180 divided by 2, which is 90 degrees. Now that does not mean you go out here to 90 and put asymptotes. I want you to come back here and look at tangent. Let's look at this first part of tangent. Tangent's period is 180 degrees, but it's symmetric across the y-axis. So half of the graph is to the left, the other half is to the right. So it goes 90 to the left and 90 degrees to the right. 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right, that's one graph of tangent. So we're going to do the same thing here. If our whole period is 90 degrees, then I'm going to go 45 degrees to the left and 45 degrees to the right. That's where I'm going to put my asymptotes. 
right there. Let's see if I can line that up better. Oh, that was pretty good. Line this one up. Ah, look, I didn't do too bad there. And so 45 to the left and 45 to the right gives you a complete period of 90 degrees. And so that would be, here's one cycle of tangent. And if I wanted to, I could do another one. I'd just go 90 degrees further this way, which would get me out to 135. And I would drop a little asymptote here. See if I can hit this one right. Three for three. Oh, I missed a little bit. Huh. Oh, well. Anyway. So there is two cycles of tangent. Of, of tangent of 2x. Now let's go take a look at cotangent. Now cotangent is, of course, we already said this, this is cosine over sine. So we're going to have asymptotes everywhere sine is 0, which happens at 0, 180, 360. Let me see if I can hit my 180 here. Oh, I missed it a little bit. Let me see if I can hit my negative 180. Oh, that's pretty good, I guess. Okay, here's what cotangent looks like. Tangent is an increasing function. And what does that, what does that mean? From left to right, tangent is going up. Well, cotangent is the opposite of that. Cotangent is a decreasing function. So cotangent, we put dots here halfway in the middle, cotangent decreases like this. That's a cotangent. There's one full cycle of cotangent. Notice this period here is only a distance of 180 degrees. So the period for cotangent is, again, pi, or 180 degrees. I guess I can show you another. Here would be a second cycle of cotangent. So there's, there's what cotangent looks like. But again, the period is only 180. Tangent and cotangent are the only two trig functions out of the six that have a 180 degree period instead. Now let's take a look at, let's do secant first. Now secant is one divided by cosine. So I'm going to draw in a cosine graph, which is not really part of the graph. I'm going to ske sketch a cosine graph. We know cosine has a zero here. It's got a zero here. It's got a zero out here at 270, and a zero back here at negative 270. It goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. So it looks something like this. There is one. We keep going out here to 360. Let's see if I can go to the left here a little bit better. That wasn't very pretty. Oh, I missed it. That was supposed to hit the 270. Anyway, that's a regular cosine graph. Now, what you're going to do to graph a secant graph is you are going to put asymptotes the same place that you put asymptotes on your tangent. You're going to put asymptotes at 90 and negative 90. Now, why are we putting asymptotes here? Let's put it out here at negative 270 as well, and out here at 270. Why are we putting asymptotes here? We are putting asymptotes here at secant for secant because anywhere cosine is 0, you're going to get undefined, which is infinity. And so the graph has to approach that asymptote. All right, so here's how you're going to draw a secant graph. Put a dot right there at 1. And then it makes this little u going up. But that's only up from negative 90 to positive 90. And by the way, that's only half of a period. The other half comes from you going to either side. It doesn't matter. Let's come over to this one. Put a dot at the negative one, and then you go down. Oh, that insinuates that I'm crossing that asymptote. Of course we know we can't do that. Here is one full period of secant. One full period of secant lasts for, that's from negative 90 to 270, that is 360 degrees, or 2 pi. So it has the same, the same period as sine or cosine, and, that, and that's, that's, that's one full period. Now you could have come over here and drawn this one, but one full period is one u going up and one u going down. So that's, this is like one and a half periods, so you just have to pick two of them. But you have to have one going up and one going down for a full secant graph. Let's come graph cosecant. 
Now, cosecant x is the reciprocal of sine of x. So everywhere sine has 0, we're going to have asymptotes for that. Now, sine is 0 at 0, 180, and negative 180. So let's draw those asymptotes right here at 0. Did I hit that? No, that's OK. What about 180? Ooh, that's pretty good. Negative 180, can I continue? Yes, I can. OK, so you draw your asymptotes there. And let's draw a regular sine graph, just to see if we know what's going on here. At 90, it's up at 1. 180, it's 0. 270, it's down here to negative 1. Not here at 360, it's back to the middle. So sine unit looks something like this. And also to backwards. <laughs> Back this way. Okay. Oh, I missed my dot. Come on, Mr. G. Okay, so that, that's basically your sine graph. The way you're going to graph a cosecant graph is the same way as a secant graph. Come out here to one of these humps for a maximum value for sine and draw a U going up. Oh, I want to do that in purple. Plus, I don't like how that looked. Let's do this. Let's do this in purple. Let's see if I can do better with that. You go to a maximum. That looks a little bit better. It's better because it's in purple. And purple is our color. Okay, Mr. G, come on. A little problem there. Did you do back to here? Okay, there we go. A U going up and then come out here to the left or to the right and draw a U going down. There is one full period for cosecant. The period is 360 degrees or 2 pi. Okay, so let's do one last, let's do a shifted cosecant. So let's do y equals cosecant x plus 1. And all that means, we know this means go up 1. We are just going to shift everything up 1. So let's come back and look at this. How would we shift this up 1? Let me change my color and see if I can just do this on the same graph. Let's go to green. y equals cosecant x plus 1. So instead of being here at 90 degrees 1, we're going to be at 90 degrees 2. The asymptotes do not change. We just move this up 1. And then if we come over here and go up 1, we're actually on the x-axis. And we go down like this. And we go down like this. So that would be cosecant x plus 1. So we're not going to get real crazy with our transformations. I really just want you to learn the basic graphs for tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. So we're going to practice that on Monday in class. You guys have a great weekend, and I will see you then.